When you want to capture packets, many people instantly go to the GUI-based Wireshark. While it's a good way to capture packets, it's primarily a GUI-based application. What if you don't have a GUI and we need to capture packets from the terminal? TCP Dump solves this issue by giving you a terminal-based way to capture and analyze packets. In this video, we will show you how to use TCP Dump. We will show you basic flags, how to read the output of TCP Dump and how to fine-tune filters to only capture the data that you want. TCP Dump was originally written in 1988 by Van Jacobsen, Sally Floyd, Vern Paxton and Stephen McCain, who were at the time employed by the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory Network Research Group. By the late 90s, due to the lack of coordination, there were many different versions of TCP Dump available on the internet. For this reason, Michael Richardson and Bill Fenner created tcpdump.org in 1999. Since TCP Dump is installed by default on Kali Linux, we can start it using the command TCP Dump. This will start a capture on the first interface in the list. Usually, this is Ethernet 0. To select the interface that we want to use, we can use the I flag followed by the interface name. When we take a look at the output, we can see that there are many different packets that are transferred, even in the short time that the capture was running. To make the packets more human readable and make TCP Dump a more powerful tool, we can use several different flags. First, we look at the T flag. The T flag changes the timestamp to a human readable format. We can use this flag up to five times. Each time we use the flag, we increase the verbosity of the timestamp. Using it once disables the default timestamp. Using it twice shows the timestamp as seconds since the 1st of January 1970. Using the flag three times prints a delta up to microsecond resolution. This delta is a time difference between two packets. Using the flag four times shows a timestamp of elapsed time since midnight. And finally, using the flag five times shows a timestamp of the time in microseconds between the current packet and the time that the dump started. By default, TCP dump resolved IP addresses to hostnames. With long hostnames that are used in networks, this might become hard to read. To prevent this, we can use the N flag. The N flag does not resolve the host, but shows the IPs instead. The V flag changes the verbosity. This flag can be used up to three times. Each extra V increases the verbosity. By using the flag twice, packages such as SMB are decoded and shown on screen. The S flag prints absolute TCP sequence numbers and not relative numbers. Absolute are real sequence numbers of the packets, while relative are the sequence numbers relative to when we started TCP dump. If we want to save the output, we can use a W flag followed by a file name that we want to create. This will save the output in a PCAP file instead of displaying the output. This PCAP can then be opened with the R flag, or we can open it with Wireshark for further analysis. Now that we got some basic flags to make the output more human readable, let's look at some packets to see how they are built up. To give us a more human readable output, we will use the following flags. N T T S. This will give us a better timestamp, no host names, and absolute sequence numbers for packets. Let's look at a random packet to see how to read the output. The first item in the line is the timestamp. This shows the time since the capture started. The second item is the source address and the destination address. The separator is the greater than or lesser than icon. These icons signal the direction that the packet is going. Next section indicates if the packet is UDP or TCP. And finally, we have the length of the packet. We can change the verbosity to show more or less information from the packets. The easiest way to filter packets is by selecting an interface like we did earlier. There are, however, more options available. These options is where the true power of TCP dump lies. With these options, we can filter exactly the data that we are interested in. We can filter packets by host by using the word host followed by a target host or IP address. This will capture all packets received and transmitted by or to the target host. We can also capture target source or destination. We can do this with the source flag for source and a test flag for destination. 
Both these flags need to be followed by a host or IP. If we want to capture an entire network, we can do this with a net flag followed by a sitter. This acts similar to the host flag, only the target is the entire network range you give as an argument. We can also limit the capture to traffic from or to certain ports. We can either use the port flag combined with a number or the source port flag. To use a range of ports to capture, we can use the port range flag followed by a port range separated by a dash. We can combine the previous examples to create complicated filters so we can find exactly what we're looking for. We can use the following three operators. The AND, the OR, or the ACCEPT operator. The AND operator can be placed between filters to combine them. For example, the HOST filter can be combined with the PORT filters to only capture hosts with a certain port. With the OR operator, the same statement find everything with selected host or the selected port. The accept flag will show the host we selected with all ports except the selected port. When creating complex queries, we can also use the parentheses to segment part of our queries. This allows us to have multiple evaluations in a single line. As you can see, we can create queries exactly for our needs. If you liked the video or learned anything, please leave a like, subscribe or comment. It would help us out a lot. Thank you for watching.